What is the meaning of life? Is there any meaning to it at all? What is the meaning of your life? Why are you here? Why am I here? Why are all uh, we little human beings buzzing around here in these cities? Why do we uh, appear here for 70 or 80 years and then suddenly disappear? What is the point of it all? It just keeps going on and on. A houseman put it this way, yonder see the morning blink. The sun is up and up must I to wash and dress and eat and drink and look at things and talk and think and work and God knows why. Oh, often have I washed and dressed and what's to show for all my pain? Let me lie a bed and rest. Ten thousand times I've done my best and all's to do again. I think a lot of us feel that way today. We wonder what's the point of it all. The place seems to be going to bits. It all seems to be fragmenting. The old values seem to have gone. The old principles seem to be forgotten. Anything that we knew about order and plan and respectability and concern for each other seems to be going down the drain so fast we can't even remember it ever existed. There seems just no point in it. It seems like a tale told by an idiot. And that's, of course, what many of us are feeling these days, not least of all little high school kids, even in America, where suicide among high school children is higher than at any other time in history. So it seems as if those of us who are children and are able to see most simply uh, life before us seem most convinced that there's no point in it and no purpose in it. And, of course, the story is the same, whether it's in Hollywood or whether it's in the executive offices of London. People who are supposedly very sophisticated and very intellectual and have great families and great upbringing are all looking towards suicide as the only way out of a tale that t is told by an idiot. Because that's what many people seem to think life is. It's a tale told by an idiot. There's no point in it. We just get up each day to try to get a good education, to get a good job, to get a good education, to have children so that they can get a good education, get a good job so that they can have children ad absurdum. On and on forever and ever. And there seems so little meaning to it all. And, of course, that is intensified by the meaninglessness in our consequent behavior as human beings because it does seem that we just mow each other down meaninglessly, meaninglessly. The terrorism that is now dominating the international scene seems to be just an expression of our absolute indifference to human life and our feeling that the whole thing is getting beyond any kind of possible control at all. And so many of us are wondering, is there any meaning to it? And uh, what we have been saying over the past few weeks on this station at this time is there is great evidence of meaning in the original world as we know it. That is, when you look at a spring morning, you go out on a spring morning, and you smell those daffodils, or you smell the tulips, or you smell the roses, and you see how the bees are used in the whole world of plant life, and you see how they flit apparently carelessly and in an unplanned way from flower to flower, but you realize from reading your books what a vital job they are doing in the flowers. And you see how birds fly in apparent joyous delight and carefree pleasure. And then you examine a bird uh, under a microscope, or you study birds, and you notice the order and design in their habits and their practices. And then you look at your own hand and you see what an absolute miracle of construction it is with all the tendons arranged so beautifully. And if you just bend a finger and you begin to examine with the help of a book like Gray's Anatomy, you begin to examine the 
amazing number of muscles that are used just to bend your index finger. And you study all the tendons that are used to bring it into that shape. And then you begin to examine the messages that go from your brain to bring about that movement in your finger. And then you examine the intricate system of blood circulation that enables life to continue in the finger while it bends, you realize that there is a great deal of meaning and purpose and direction in the world in which we live and in ourselves, who are probably the most complex creatures in it. And it isn't long before you realize there are two phenomena here in this world. There is great order and great design and great purpose evident in the structure of almost everything I can see with my eyes. And yet alongside that, there is the chaos and the apparent meaninglessness of the bombings and the divorces and the arguments and the fighting and the strikes. And uh, we see that one sets the other off. Uh, one contrasts with the other so that the order and design in the universe, when we sit by a lake or a river fishing, appears to us all the more beautiful and wonderful when it's set against the chaos of the industrial social antagonism and disorder in which many of us live. And what, in fact, is the result is that most of us today would agree with each other. Yes, you're right. There is amazing order and plan in our universe. And you're right. There has to be some reason or intellect that produced that order. And you're right. Evolution or the survival of the fittest or the law of gravity or the Big Bang Theory are only suggestions as to how that mind might have created that order. But you're right. Those things themselves are only methods. They are not the originators of the order and design. And it is true. If I have to use my mind to place beads in order on a string, then whoever or whatever placed the elements in that intricate order that we find them in the periodic chart of the elements, that mind must be as orderly and as reasoning a mind as mine. What, of course, strikes many of us today and what we so often bring up in our classes at school is, oh, but there's chaos, there's disorder, there's all kinds of disorder as well. But most of that is brought by us human beings. And if you say, well, there is an odd collision in the, uh, plan in, among the planets, very odd. And it's remarkable because of its oddness or its exception to the rule. Overall, we are surrounded by a very stable, reliable universe by which we set our clocks and by which we arrange our business appointments. And one is driven to the conclusion by the way the order in our world contrasts with the disorder that we human beings have brought. One is driven to the thought that some power, some mind, some intellect, some reason must have originated it. It is very important to keep things in perspective. It's vital that we do not allow ourselves to be driven off that important conclusion by the fact that there are exceptions to that. And most of the exceptions are found in what we human beings have done to this world. It is important, in other words, uh, to retain your view of the wood and not to lose it because you're looking at the trees. And of course, in these days, it's vital for us not to attribute to whatever force or mind originated the universe, to attribute to that the chaos and disorder that we human beings have brought in it by the free exercise of our own wills. And so, what is the meaning of the world? What is the meaning of life? Well, there seems to have been originally in the intention of the mind or reasoning power that produced the world a great sense of meaning and a great sense of order 
and a great concept of purpose. What is the meaning of life? Let's talk a little more tomorrow about it.